Hi everyone, I want to talk about my Jakey e. Lee Custom Shop Charvel. So, I have a couple minor gripes, but a lot of good things to say about this. I had to wait about a year to get it, and when I say Custom Shop, you'll notice that the headstock does not say Custom Shop. That's because the Jakey e. Lee USA Signature is made pretty much to order. What they do is they manufacture these once they have enough for the run. A brief history on this model is that Jake E. Lee lived with a dude that worked at the Charvel paint booth. He had a modified Fender USA Strat with a big headstock. That's why this model, you'll see, has 21 frets, like a vintage Fender. Now, he felt kind of lame with his guitar, he said. He said different things in interviews. But his buddy at the Charvel paint booth repainted the guitar and chopped the headstock and put a Charvel logo on it. Now... Like I said, I had to wait a while for it, and no big deal. You know, good things come to those who wait. And I want to discuss some of the features of it. So it's DiMarzio SDS, one single coils, Seymour Duncan JB, ash body, maple neck, rosewood board, bullet truss rod, just like a vintage fender. Okay, one volume, five-way selector. Uh, black base plate, nickel... Um, saddles well maybe they're uh, brass with nickel coating i'm not sure and uh black output jack here okay so all single ply black pickguard finish is white with lavender hue now i have this in a fender uh plastic hard shell just so i could preserve those real nice um custom shop cases frets beautifully done on this no overhangs nothing like that and uh nice rounded fret edges good crowning job all the way around. No complaints on the fretwork. Guitar plays and sounds phenomenal. Now, my minor gripes. I have to pick this up and then I have to change the camera angle here to do this. So I apologize if I'm making you seasick. Can you see that right there in the neck pocket? That's a finish blem. That finish blem cannot be felt. That means that they finished over this with the clear and it's perfectly solid in there. Now, when I contacted Charvel about this, I said, hey, waited a year for this guitar. What's going on here? Uh, I'd like some answers. And they said that is perfectly acceptable to them, that they see nothing that would stop that from leaving the shop. Me personally, I think it's irritating. Okay, but again, I can't feel it. Uh, if you run your finger over it, you cannot hear it. So... Uh, now I do have a minor gripe about the skunk stripe. I can catch it. Where is it at? My fingernail right there. Uh, that's a quick sand. No big deal. Now, the one of the main purposes for me bringing this uh, to light, I have a few complaints. One, this is not what Jake's signature is. It is if you order it from Charvel. But you'll notice on the Charvel website itself, the place where they show you what he uses, the bridge he is using is different. Down here, you'll notice this thickness of where the screws go through. The current one that he uses has the thickness that the Blue Burst brass bridge has. In addition, Jake's current one has a tone knob and 22 frets. I'm not talking about on the Blue Burst. I'm talking about on this one that he plays live. Now, this here is something minor that pisses me off that something that costs this much. Now, the retail on this is about, about 2500 after you pay tax. It's $2,350 or $2,399 um, for the, the guitar and then after you add your tax. Okay, now here's a gripe. This does not line up with this. And the reason it doesn't is because this is a standard space humbucker. It is not a trem bucker. Rob, there's no trem. I understand that. Trem bucker doesn't mean trem, it means trem spacing. If you look, just put straight downward pressure. We line up one, two, three. Not really, not really, definitely not. My Blue Burst, which actually costs more than this damn thing, is exactly the same way. 
I don't know why the oversight on Charvel's part on that. It's beyond my comprehension. How's the guitar play? Awesome. It's a super strat on steroids. How does it sound? Incredible. Great output here. Um, it's a JB. That's all. But in this ash body, it sounds phenomenal. These SDSs, word to the wise, they are not hum canceling. However, they are low noise and they sound great. Sorry, cat for there. Uh, the, the the sound of these impressed me so much that I have two custom builds going, two custom Jakes, and I'm having the same pickups put in the neck in the middle position. I'm not a middle pickup player, but since acquiring this one in my blue burst, uh, definitely, absolute definitely. Uh, I don't know why we couldn't get what Jake actually uses with the 22nd fret. And if you notice, there's almost enough space. I mean, if that wood came out just a tick further on either end, you have enough room for a 22nd fret. So minor gripe on the finish here, uh, minor gripe on the 22nd fret, minor gripe on this, minor gripe on the skunk uh, stripe thing. Overall, I still give this guitar of, yes, I would buy it again without a doubt in my mind. If I was at the music store and this was for sale and I was picking it up off the shelf, I would definitely still buy it in spite of the things that I pointed out. Um, but with that said, you know, there's things I think could be improved on this. And, you know, the 22nd fret, I can get over that. This space, I can get over. It's it's purely aesthetics. Um, but when you wait a year almost for a guitar and you finally get it and uh, you see those things, it's a little, little bit of a bummer, but I don't want this to be all negative. This thing sounds incredible. I get a lot of compliments on it in live use. It holds tune very, very well. Non-locking tuners. These are just standard pegs, non-locking, but just great guitar all the way around. Holds tune, sounds great. Real simple, one volume, five way, you know, this, Outer coil on this, this, both these, that. You get some real nice Strat sounds out of it. And uh, you can get all your favorite Aussie licks out of it too. Um, give it a shot. If you see one, don't hesitate to pick it up. There's a few variations. Uh, there's the Lavender Hue. There's a Blue Burst. ESP has made a few. Uh, there's two different types with the ESP as far as I'm aware. One has the 24 and 3 quarter inch uh, spacing. One has 25 and a half. This is 25 and a half. 12 to 16 inch compound radius fretboard. Um, the uh, ESP ones, there's ones that say ESP uh, Jakey Lee. There's ones that say ESP only and have a Strat headstock. They get a little bit more money. And there's uh, another one that's pretty rare is the Fernandez one. Uh, my opinion is the Charvels play better overall. Um, I don't own an ESP uh, Jake yet. I do plan on getting one as soon as I find one that I like with the Strat headstock and in a color I like. What they did, what ESP and Fernandez both did, is they released them in colors Jake didn't use or play. They gave fretboard options that Jake didn't use. And I mean, if we're buying a signature model, let's get the signature model. So that's all I have on this one. I'm going to do one on my Blue Burst. And I am also going to do a comparison sound and all that between the both of them. Uh, but like I said, this is the signature model, but it's not actually what Jake's using. His bridge has the larger plate like the Blue Burst. He has a tone knob that he doesn't use, but he has one. He has a 20-second fret. Uh, I've also seen early versions of this at, say, Custom Shop on the headstock. Uh, the current ones don't. I've also seen that there are versions of this that on the back of the headstock, it'll say this is licensed under or whatever from Fender. Mine doesn't say that. Neither of them do. And none of the current production ones I have say that. When you get this, again, you will get a uh, Charvel Custom Shop case when you order one of these. I've just elected to keep mine nice, and I put it into a standard Fender Strat case. Hope this video helps you out. Talk to you later.